So recall in section 3.5 on the second example that I gave it to you, we have functions 2x minus tangent x. And when we were solving for x intercept, and we have a problem back then because we don't know how to solve, you know, this kind of equations. So there are a lot of like, you know, equations that I, we cannot solve, you know, the solutions of it by hand. So in this three, session 3.8, the, met, the new Newton method that we're going to learn will allow us to use a <clears throat> technique to find a real root of an equation. But, uh, you know, when we say find it, that means we're going to be approximation. So Newton method is the approximation method. Right. So let's take a look at an idea of how this Newton method is developed. So if let's say if I have a function f, here's a right curve, and you can see that this is the root of the zero of the functions, right, on the x-axis. And in order to find that x-intercept, so what we can do is we can basically choose an initial x value and use that x value to find out the tangent line on the curve at that x value. So after we find out the tangent line, you can see that this tangent line, if you draw it long enough, it will uh, cross through the x-axis and then there will be x-intercept. So now what we're gonna do is notice that this x-intercept of the tangent line is closer to the real root that we wanna find for the functions. So now what we do is we use this x-intercept as a point on the function, graph of functions, and use that point to find out the second tangent line at that point. And same situation, same, same idea, when you extend this tangent line, this tangent line will cross the x-axis, and then you will have the x-intercept of the tangent line. And notice that this now, x sub two, that x-intercept is much closer, all right, x value to the we, uh, the roots of the functions that we want to look for. So this is a process of like iterations that we need to do in order to get uh, better approximations to find out the real roots of the tangent line, from the tangent line. So <clears throat> here's this, what Newton method is talking about. So in order to talk about like, you know, find out the tangent line, first the function has to be differentiable on a certain interval. So therefore, let f be a differentiable function. And suppose that r okay, is a real root of the functions. If x sub n right, is an approximation to r, then the next approximation x sub n plus 1 to r is given by x sub n plus 1 equal to x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x of n, okay? So the derivatives involved in here. So basically like, you know, first, if we know this is a, pro this is a root approximation for this real root, then the next approximation that we want, right, can be obtained by this formula right here. So that way I can basically like, you know, keep on you reusing some, uh, something that we had before. So a lot of times uh, in this kind of um, prob, uh, approximation problem, uh, the initial points will not be given to you. Initial x value will not be given to you. So you need to like basically uh, guess it, right? But we can make an educated guess with using whatever we learned in the past. So here's the pros and cons of Newton methods. Uh, Newton methods pro is basically, you know, if Newton methods work, it works very fast, meaning it's like, you know, if, um, if, if the method works, then it will go to, it will lead you to the uh, solutions that you want very, very fast, okay? And the con part is like, you know, if you do not, uh, the method doesn't work, another way of saying is because the initial point is what we are trying to choose. Um, so if you choose a uh, wrong initial point for a particular zero, then, this uh, this will go back and forth, back and forth, and it will take a long time to reach to the point that you want. 
So in that kind of situations, you know that your initial point is wrong and you can basically reconsider that. So now what we wanna do is we wanna try to look at how this formula is being coming up, right? So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to find the equation of the tangent line at the initial point, x naught. So let's take a look at on that one. So equation of the tangent line at initial point x of zero. So if, you know, if this, this point will become x sub zero and then f of x sub zero evaluating at the point. So put it into slope in the set form, y minus y sub uh, f of x sub zero that's equal to f prime of x sub zero. That's basically the slope of the tangent line at that particular point, right? And then times with x minus x sub zero. So from here, what we want is we want to find out what is the x intercept of this tangent line. So let's take a look at on that. So we know that from the graph, notice that this blue tangent line, the x intercept of this blue tangent line is at x sub one. So you know we will denote that x sub one as the x intercept of the tangent line at x sub zero. Right? So what we want to do is we want to find out you know how to get that. So uh, to find out the x intercept, basically we let y be equal to zero. So this point, right? That is basically what uh, uh, x sub zero, uh, x sub one, and then y is zero. So when I let y be equal to zero, that will become negative f of x sub zero equal to f prime of x sub zero. And f, actually, I'm solving for this x, but however, we know that x is basically going to become x sub one. So I replace it right there so that you can see the notation how it's going. And <clears throat> divide both sides by f prime of x sub zero and then add an x sub zero on both sides. So now you can see that to get the x intercept of this tangent line at x sub zero, we have to use this formula, which is basically very similar to this one that we talk about right here. See that? To find out the next approximation, we need to have what? The initial ones first. So basically what you can do is you can use the same idea, right? Plug it in this x sub one into a formula. So meaning it's like, you know, this will become x sub one and then f of x sub one. So I can find out the equation of the tangent line again at this point, which is the green one. And then again, find out the uh, intersections of this x intercept of this equation of tangent line the same way that I did. And then that will help me to get the x intercept x of two, which is the next iterations that next approximation that we want, which is closer to the zero. So this is basically the idea of the derivations, right, of this formula. Now what we want to do is we want to use this formula to uh, approximate some uh, in some of the example. Right? Let's take a look at on that. So uh, example one tell us to use Newton method to approximate square root of 11 and then to give five decimal place accuracy. So square root of 11, the way that we can think about is, you know, let's say this is a, a real root of a functions. So what, how do we create a functions out of this number right here? So what we can do is we can think of it, this as a solutions of a function, which is I can say that x equal to square root of 11. When I square it on both sides, that will become 11. And then when I divide uh, at both, uh, subtract both sides by 11, this gives me this, right? So I can let's I can say that let f of x be equal to x squared minus eleven, which is a differentiable functions. Right? Now, something that you have to be careful is this: when we go back to solving, notice that when you take the square root, it will become plus or minus sign. So what happens is if you do not choose your initial points correctly, then you're going to be getting, uh, you know, on the negative uh, solution sites, which is not the desire that we want for this particular problem, right? So <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to sort of like, you know, for this problem, we can basically uh, look at it this way, uh, square root of 9 and then square root of 16, that bound is square root of 11. So basically to get initial points, I can basically choose what, uh, three to stop my initial points to go for this particular route because nine, 
square root of 9 is closer to square root of 11, right? Compared to square root of 11, square root of 16. Now, this is like, you know, very, uh, an, uh, an easy problem that we can see the numerical part, so we can basically guess a better uh, initial point, right? But however, like in other problems, we might not be able to do this, right? So keep in mind on this. <clears throat> Finally, to use this formula, what we need is we need the first derivative function. So first derivative is equal to 2x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put into this function uh, uh, those into the formula, which is the formula is <coughs> x as n plus 1, that is equal to x of n minus f of x of n all over f prime of x of n into this formula. So that is basically, if you look at this, this formula will be x of n minus, <coughs> if I evaluate a function with x of n, this will become x of n squared minus 11 over uh, the derivative function, which is 2 times x of n. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start plugging in this n value 2 into it to get all my solutions. So for example, uh, as we already predicted earlier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my initial point x of 0 to be equal to 3. So what I basically will do is I'm going to plug it in, right? I'm going to plug it in uh, all of this, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, this 3 into the functions to get my, the next one, which is my x of 1, right, will be equal to x of 0, which is going to be 3, minus over 3 squared minus 11 over 2 times 3, right? which will give me approximately, approximately 3.3333, it will never end. So if I want to approximate for the next one, x sub 2, which is like each iterations, okay, uh, that is closer and closer to the value of square root of 11 that we want. Right, which is the root of this function, the real root of this function. So in x of 2, what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in 3.333 dot 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 minus 3.333 dot 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 square minus 11 over 2 times 3.333 dot dot dot. And when you use a calculator, that will give me approximate answer of 3.3166 six dot 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 <clears throat> all right and then since we want to approximate to like five decimal places i will always like you know use you know about six or seven decimal places to plug it back in and recompute it so that i will not have a big error <clears throat> so keep in mind on that that is very important right is five decimal places accuracy. I want to use like, you know, at least like six or seven decimal places from here, plug it into, you know, for the next um, <clears throat> approximations. So it will be x of three, it will be approximately, you know, these become approximations because, you know, this is not an exact value anymore. So it will be 3.316666 dot 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 minus 3.316666 square minus dot 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 square minus 11 <coughs> over 2 times 3.16666 dot dot dot. And that will give me approximately the answer of 3.31662. And finally, if you use the same approach, then you will get the five decimal place accuracy that we want, which is 3.31662 on this fourth iterations, right? And a fourth approximation, we will get a five decimal place accuracy for this square root of 11. So what we can do now is, you know, try to use your calculator and then punch into the calculator square root of 11 and then see the first five decimal place is the same thing as this value or not. And that concludes this first example. So second example, what we want to do is we want to find the largest possible real roots of this given functions, which is the third degree polynomial. And we want to approximate it to four decimal place accuracy. 
So how do we find the largest possible rear root, right? And that's basically dependent on your initial X value that you set it up, right? The Newton method is always like, you know, uh, dependent on the initial X value that you set it up because if you set it up the correct one, it will work very well and very fast and it approaches to the approximated, uh, get to the approximation that you want very fast. But if you look at this is third degree power, I have like, you know, let's say if I have third degree function graph look like this, and if I have three zeros, and of course the zero will be in a numerical order, which one is least, you know, to the largest. So how do we figure out, you know, which X uh, initial value to use, right, for this type of problem to get the largest possible real root? So something that we learned from the past will help us a lot in this case. So in order to have a, you know, the, uh, the, the, re, uh, the, uh, the root, the rear root, the graph need to have a, a loop and it have like, you know, a maximum and a minimum peak, right? So what we can do is we can basically find out the critical numbers and then sort of use the largest critical number, see that if you want to find out the largest zero, then which is right here, and that is basically what must be like, you know, either the same or the big, uh, larger than the largest critical number that we're going to get. So that's the idea that we're going to use to find out or to guess what is our initial uh, x value is going to be. And definitely you don't want to use like, you know, to be safe, you don't want to use like a initial X value as 1000 or 2000, because uh, that will be like, you know, not a really like educated case, right? So let's take a look at on like finding out uh, the first derivatives and then critical values so that we can decide like what is our initial X value should be after we look at where is the largest initial uh, critical number is, okay? So find out the first derivatives. So y prime is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 40. And we know the critical number is when y prime is equal to zero or y prime is equal to uh, DNE does not exist. Since this is a polynomial, DNE case will not exist. So I'm setting the first derivative equal to zero and that give me uh, negative 10 over three and x is equal to four. So I have like this situations right here. Let's say right here is a four and then right here is like you know, negative 10 over three. Like we got this kind of situation. So from here, what tells me is like, you know, to talk about the zero right here, right? The largest po positive zero roots, then it must be greater than this critical number, right? It must be greater than this critical number. So that will allow us to sort of like, you know, guess which number you want to you know, uh, uh, let your X initial is gonna be. So you can use IVT to basically guess, like, you know, you can plug it in X, uh, X, uh, X equal to four or X equal to five, right? And then you're gonna cast like, you know, a little bit further to plug it in. So by using the IVT, you can check initial X value, right? And let's say, you know, in this case, we're gonna be using my initial x value that x sub zero to be equal to seven, okay? So you can check to you're using the initial uh, IVT to check where your initial value is gonna should be, okay? So I'm checking with this, uh, I'm using this uh, x sub zero to be equal to seven to start with. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into the formula that we learned before, right? So, <clears throat> so I wrote it down the general formula for you again, which is x of n is equal to x of n minus f of x of n over f prime of x of n. If you plug it in, you know, x of n into the functions, original function f and uh, the first derivative function. And this is what I got, x of n to the third power minus x of n square minus 40 x of n plus 80, uh, plus eight, all over three x of n square minus two x of n minus uh, 40. So what you need to do is on a test, you don't need to show me plug it in uh, every single time. 
you can basically write down the general formula and then uh, substituting this x of n into the functions and then give me this general formula for me okay and then else you can you can use your calculator to stop plugging in your uh, initial points and then use a uh, you know a better uh, appropriate decimal number right decimal places to do the next approximations so as we mentioned earlier we let x of zero be equal to you know uh, the initial point x of zero be equal to seven so the next approximation to get x of one I plug it in seven into all the x of n and then when you do the computations that will give you approximate answer of six point seven six three four since we want four decimal places, I round it into four decimal places. Uh, so it should be dot dot dot. So you want you might want to put a few more decimal places so that you can plug it in again the next time to get a next uh, iterations. So when I go into the second iterations, meaning this time I'm plugging in all of this decimal number into this formula wherever x of n is, and that will help me to get another approximations using your calculator. That will give me six point seven five zero two. Dot, 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 dot. Okay, and now to get the third approximations because we want to make sure that we won't get up to full decimal place accuracies. So I have to keep on going until all four decimal places are the same number. Right? So that's why you want to use if it is four decimal places number, I will use at least six decimal places to uh, put it in and then compute. Right? So when I use this six point seven five zero two and then into this formula. I plug it into this formula and compute it. I got 6.7502 again, and then da da da. So at this point, you can see that up to four decimal places accuracy we got means all first four decimal places the same. So that's where I can stop my approximation and answer the questions, right? So uh, the largest possible root will be approximately 6.7502. This is approximations that we have. So this is basically uh, uh, the end of this example number two. So example three asks us to approximate all real roots of x squared minus uh, cosine two x equal to zero that equations. And then we want to approximate it to two decimal place accuracy. Right. So let's take a look around. This is the type of problem that, you know, very similar to something that we couldn't solve on 3.5 example number two, right? X, uh, uh, 2x equal to like tangent x, that type of problem, okay? Uh, by hand, uh, you know, there's, uh, you might not be able to compute that. So what we can do is we can use this Newton method to approximate what is going to be, uh, what are the real roots going to be? So how many real roots are we going to have? So the way that we can think about is looking at this equation as like, you know, uh, adding two cosine two x to both sides, that means x squared equal to uh, cosine two x. That means when the x squared value and cosine two x values, they are the same, right? When you subtract each other, it will become zero, which is those uh, solutions of the equations. So by looking at the graph, you know, here's my parabola x squared graph, and then here's the cosine graph. Right in a pink, and you can see that it intersect at like two points right there. So that basically say that you know there are two x value, right? There are two x value, right? That will help us to you know get x square and then cosine x, uh, cosine two x, the same value. So how do we find those two value? That's why we're going to be using this uh, Newton methods to approach it. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, let f of x be equal to x squared minus cosine 2x. And when we take the derivative of this, that will become 2x uh, plus sine 2x times 2. Okay. So now that we get this, we're going to substitute into the formula. So remember, make sure you write down your general formula and then start plugging in the numbers, right? So uh, here's the general formula, right? 
uh, x of n plus one approximations is equal to uh, your x of n, which is our initial point, minus f uh, functions f evaluating initial point divided by uh, derivative function in uh, evaluating at initial point. So when I substitute x of n to the functions, that will become x of n squared minus cosine two times x of n and divided by two uh, two x of n plus two times sine x of uh, two x of n, two x n. So now the question is, how do we find out what is our initial points for this particular one? And we know that you know from this graph right here, uh, I know that my cosine value cannot be graded. Uh, cosine value is bounded between one and negative one. Right? Cosine of 2x is bounded between 1 and negative 1. So the highest point that I can go is 1. So uh, the x value that I'm going to choose right, will be 1. Because uh, x squared graph, right, it will be the function value is 1 when x is equal to 1. So that's how I guessed it. So now using this 1, plug it into this uh, approximations uh, formula. Then when we to get next approximations, I will be getting 0 0.63 dot dot dot. Okay. And then maybe this was uh, this is already a rounded one. And then what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use this 0 0.63, plug it into this formula again, and make sure you are you are in a radian mode. Okay. So my next approximation will be approximately give you 0 0.60. Da, da, da. Right. And then using this 0 0.60 to plug it into here to get an x approximations, and that will give me 0 0.60 again. Da, da, da. So that's why we're going to be stopped because the questions only ask us to find two decimal place accuracy. And now this is one of the solutions that we get, but how about another solutions? So as you can see, x squared graph and then cosine graph are symmetrical. So we don't need to guess another initial uh, value, initial x value to find out for the second solutions. Because of this is symmetrical, if one solution is a positive and the other solution will be what? On the other side, which is going to be a negative. So therefore, I can state this. This is symmetrical, so the other zero is negative 0 0.60. And that concludes our third example in this sections.